Gotcha. Scared you. Scared you. All right, so boom, check it out. There's one thing in this world that I love more than anything. And before you start guessing, no, it's not family, friends, or any of that mushy stuff. All that stuff is for suckers. The thing that I love more than anything in this world is 80s horror movies. And I know what you might be thinking. Why? Why does this man love 80s horror movies so much? Well, I'll tell you why. There are two things that I just absolutely love about 80s horror movies. And those two things are tits and blood. And what better time to talk about a horror movie than smack dab in the middle of spooky season. So today we're going to be talking about one of the cheesiest 80s horror movies ever made called Slumber Party Massacre. See, even the title sounds cheesy. So the movie starts off with some unnecessarily creepy music to accompany the opening credits. And yeah, I already know what you're about to say. Eh, it's a scary movie. It's supposed to be scary. Me, 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 me. And yeah, I get it. But the movie barely started yet. And you gotta admit that they're overdoing it just a little bit. Like, chill. Anyway, the movie introduces us to the main character. I don't remember her name. I'll probably figure it out later. And it is in this scene where the movie blesses us with some shameless nudity. Yeah, but before we get to that, maybe I should give you guys a little backstory on this movie. Come on, man. Now, if you couldn't already tell, Slumber Party Massacre was a low-budget horror movie that was made in 1982. There are two main components to this movie, and those two things are titties and blood. And despite those two things being appealing to mostly men, Slumber Party Massacre was actually written by a woman. I know, it shocked me too. The lady who wrote this movie's name is Rita Mae Brown, an author and feminist activist. Ooh, ironic. Now, she originally wrote this film to be a parody of the slasher film genre, but when the producers got the screenplay, they basically said, That's a great idea! I'm with that! And they decided to make it into a serious film instead. So they hired a bunch of actors from a local university and shot some scenes and the rest is history. I guess it was so good that they decided to make a trilogy out of it. I ain't seen the third one, but I have seen the second one. It's not as good as the first one, but I mean, it's good in its own right, so I might talk about it someday. I don't know. Fun fact, I almost got some coochie to this movie, but uh, you know what? My mom be watching these joints. Let me just get back to them. So the movie starts off with our main character whose name I still can't remember getting ready for another day of school. Now we can finally see those titties I was talking about. Oh, okay, okay, hold up, stop, time out. Maybe it's just me, but this lady looks too damn old to be playing a high schooler. I don't know what the deal was in 80s horror movies with hiring middle-aged adults to play high schoolers. The biggest offender of this will probably have to be the original version of Carrie, where they hired this old-ass woman to play an 18-year-old. Like I said before, they hired some of these actors from college, and I'm gonna assume that the ones from the college are the ones we see in high school. Some of them look too old for college. Some of them look just right, but I think we can all agree that almost every single one of them looks way too old to be in high school school except this one though she's just right anyway back to the movie as trish is getting ready for school with this relaxing ass music in the background she decides to get rid of some of her stuffed animals because she's in high school now and all that baby stuff like stuffed animals she just way too old for her. yeah yeah way too old mom i'm 18 years old remember no you ain't so she throws some of them away except this one this one was just too cute then she makes her way to school and ooh, somebody took the barbie doll from the trash can Man, I wonder who that could be. So we finally get to school and these two kids are talking about prom dates when we see this phone lady who about bad as shit. And obviously these teenagers share my opinion because this dude starts spitting some serious game to her. Would you ever consider dating a younger man? I mean, you know what they say about younger men, try it, you'll like it. Until his homie cock blocks him. Your number is zero. I mean, it's kind of sad too because she's actually thinking about breaking the law maybe i mean this dude does look like he's in his mid-20s anyway the phone lady is thinking about throwing it back on this high school <gasps> okay so the phone lady gets snatched up and here we have our first kill of the movie it's about as cheesy as it can be you know the screaming the killing the blood all that jazz you really gotta appreciate how he just gently lays her head down before he you know sticks a drill in her head And neither one of the dudes hear anything that just happened, and it made me laugh so hard when I saw it. Now listen, this may be a cheesy 80s horror movie, but that does not mean that it doesn't have its fair share of disturbing scenes. This next scene is so disturbing that it even shook me a little. And you know me, I'm built different, okay? I played the scary maze game once, and I only wasn't able to sleep for one day. So I'm warning you right now, if you easily disturbed, have a weak heart, or you just built you just built like a marshmallow, please skip to the timestamp on the screen. I'll give you three seconds. You still here? Okay, but when you see this scene, don't say I didn't warn you. Now, you're probably wondering, man, what could be so scary in this scene? Well, I'm glad you asked, because this scene features the abhorrent imagery of women playing basketball. <laughs> 
See? Look, I told you it was scary. Look, look at you. You can't even look at your screen right now. This scene is absolutely terrifying. Why are they dribbling like that? Why does she brick so hard? Man, this chick can't post up to save her life. Why did she brick so hard? Ironically, she's the best basketball player on the team. I mean, I guess she was able to redeem herself by scoring, so eh. Then this girl started hating. Probably because she suck at basketball. Alright, this is the last week of varsity basketball. Next week we start tryouts for baseball. What? Varsity? That's varsity basketball? Man, I would hate to see JV. Anyway, it goes without saying that this is the worst scene in the movie. Luckily, the movie is able to redeem itself by showing us the best scene in the movie right after it. And if you've seen this movie before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the shower scene. See, 80s horror movies didn't shy away from showing any type of nudity. They were showing it all back in the day. So I might get age restricted for showing y'all this, but who cares? Yeah, boy, go ahead and show me them cheeks, baby. Yeah, give them to Oh, man. Uh, so... Uh, my computer glitched out while I was recording all of that. Haha, <laughs> ha, that's crazy. Anyway, Trish starts talking about a party that she's throwing in her house, and she invites all her best friends. Hey, you want to go to a party tonight? Uh, where's it going to be? White House. She also wants to invite the new girl, Valerie, a.k.a. the best mother <laughs> basketball player in the school. But Diane don't like her, so she don't want it. Look, what do you have against Valerie anyway? Nothing. Line, so she starts flaming this shit out of her. Or how pretty she is. She works at it. Did you ever notice how perfect her eyeliner is? Valerie hears everything and now she don't want to come to the party. Hey Valerie. I'm having a few girls over tonight and I was wondering if maybe I you can't could Trish. I, I'm sorry. Oh come I on. Diane, you're a snob. Hey, only the best people are, you know? Man, what a bitch. And that school is over and everybody going home so they can get ready for the party. Except for her. She left something in the locker room, so now she gotta go back and get it. Oh, Linda, where are you going? I forgot a book in my locker. There's a test on Monday. I have to pass it. Okay, but hurry. They'll be locking the building up soon. Wait a minute, you're the PE teacher. Why didn't you stay with her so she didn't get locked in? Surely you got keys to one of the doors in the gym. Why are you in such a hurry to leave? It's not like you got anything better to do. You're a teacher. Teachers don't have lives. This doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, this is a horror movie. All right, carry on. So she finally finds the book that she was looking for, and what do you know? She gets locked in. And to make it even worse, the killer is in there too. Ain't that just amazing? You know, this death scene is surprisingly well choreographed, despite this being a cheesy horror movie, up until the very end. She hides from the killer, and he's about to stop looking for her when <gasps> the blood from her cut gave away her hiding spot. So the killer drills open the door, and nothing. They, they don't show anything. He just runs out of the school, and wait a minute. I thought the school was locked. How'd he get in, how'd he get in there? Better yet, how'd he get out? I just noticed that. That's stupid. The PE teacher is at home making a sandwich or something. She has no life, just like I said. There was no reason to be in that much of a rush to leave the school. I I'm sorry if I sound a little heated, man. The baddest chick in the she movie kind of just died. I I'm a little... I don't even want to talk no more, man. She hears a noise, so she starts to go investigate. Oh, boy. I sure hope we don't get hit with a random jump. <laughs> Oh yeah, she was looking for a cat in the scene that I didn't show you because I had nothing funny to say about it. You haven't seen my cat around, have you? Not all day. Her cat's name is Kitty Muffin. Muffin? Kitty? Muffin? I don't know. Cats are retarded. So boom, all the Trish's homies show up and right off the bat, they trying to get crunk. What's the matter with you? Cast your eyes on this. Maui Wowie. 100% seedless prime you know, I'm no weed connoisseur, but from the way she's describing it, Maui Waui seems to be the 80s equivalent of loud. I don't know, I'll probably have to look it up. <laughs> Maui Waui. Anyway, back at Valerie's house. Whoa, wait a minute. That is the biggest pack of the Kool Aid I've ever seen. Is that how big they used to be? Whoa, so you mean to tell me they used to be able to get kilos of Kool Aid back in the 80s, but now some four decades later, we getting this. Fucking nickel bag of Kool Aid they got the nerve to charge 25 cents for. Man, I'm heated. I ain't even talking about Valerie right now. So now our 80s ladies are chilling, maxing on some Pringles, smoking some Maui Waui. Life is good. Trish get mad because Kimberly gang banging all the chips. Quick lamb and all the chips. This is the best time to do it before Diane gets here and eats them all. Damn! You know, Kim constantly dropping these chips is getting on my nerves a lot more than I think it should. I guess they call it a glomming back in the 80s. You know, you glomming all the chips when like you hog or something. Yeah, it, it sounds stupid to me. But Trish can't even talk because she gang banging the joint, so. Quick lamb in the joint. Speaking of Diane, where is she at? I mean, it seemed like she was on her way over to the party in that scene that I didn't show you because I had nothing funny to say about it. I wonder where she could be. Man, I hope they don't try to reveal her by doing some cheesy jump scare or anything. <laughs> 
She is such a bad bitch though. So y'all remember Valerie with that kilo of Kool-Aid she had? Yeah, she at home chilling with her sister. The movie decided to give her some screen time. I mean, they sort of made her a big deal with her not getting invited to the party, so it makes sense. Now, I'ma just come right out and say it. Her sister is the baddest chick in the movie. And I already know what you're about to say. But you said she was the baddest she chick in the movie. Bad. And she was. But look, she was only on screen for like 10, 15 minutes tops. Don't count, I already did. She got clapped before the movie hit the good parts. We gotta pass the torch on to somebody. And yeah, Valerie kind of bad too, I guess. Anyway, her sister's name is Courtney. Courtney's entire purpose in this movie is to be horny. Seriously. Like, right after her sister leaves to go take care of the trash, or something like that. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Courtney runs off to go find... porn. Hitting in Valerie's room under her mattress, so I, I guess they both horny. Anyway, back at the slumber party, the homies come over and- Oh my goodness! Why the f*** is her arm so big? Wait a minute, why is this one buff but this one ain't? Somebody need to lay off a playgirl. Anyway, the homies come over to peep on the girls. Damn, Jackie got some mega milkers, bro. Yes. Yes. Yeah! Courtney's still at home being horny, reading some playgirl. She get caught though. Fork it over, shortcakes. As soon as Diane shows up to the party, they put her to work and make her get some firewood. Because I guess that's just what you did in the 80s. And oh snap, the killer is here with a meat cleaver. Gross. <gasps> Bruh. Nah, it's just a chill ass babysitter killing snails like a weirdo. I can't believe I faked you out with that, man. You should have known that wasn't the killer. The killer was using the power drill this whole time. Dummy. I'm sorry. That was me. I, I, I'm, I apologize. Please don't unsubscribe. Please. I beg of you. Anyway, um, Mr. Contact dies. <laughs> Now back at the house, the girls are doing what girls do at slumber parties. What exactly do girls do at slumber parties? Oh, you know, fun things like reading the newspaper. Yeah, this party boring as shit. Now it's about as cold as polar bear coochie in the house. So Trish goes to close that window that she seriously should have closed like 10 minutes ago. Man, I sure hope we don't get hit with another jump scare for no reason. Hey, look, it's the Barbie doll from earlier. Spooky. Now Trish is suspicious and she asks Diane if she locked the garage. Diane, did you remember to close the garage door when you brought the wood in? I don't know. I hate Diane so much. Anybody named Diane is garbage. So they go to check the garage and nothing's wrong. Ooh, spooky. Anyways, back at the horny house, Valerie steals the magazine from Courtney and then finds a banana peel in her bed. Why she got a banana peel in the bed? That don't make... Oh my god. Courtney was reading Playgirl and she had a banana in her bed. Absolutely disgusting. And then her sister exposes her for being a freak. Yeah! Oh, Faker, you were beating off boys in the fifth grade. I was not, you creep. Just nasty. She's still bad, though. Back at the party, the girls start clowning Diane for talking to her boyfriend on the phone. Do you think I'm getting better? <laughs> <laughs> then they forget to pay the power bill. I didn't pay my electric bill last month. Oh my God. Hey, wow, the lights went off. See? I told you. Farah. So they go check it out, and Kim drops her flashlight because she's dumb and stupid and ugly and dumb and ugly and dumb and stupid and... <laughs> Damn. It turns out to be the boys messing with him. Now the boys are in the party with all the baddies. The boys are horny too. I mean, I guess it worked out for him in the end, so. Then Courtney tries to kill her sister. I'm just joking. She just wanted to scare her. She was kind of pissed off about being exposed for beating off boys in the fifth grade. I mean, I would have suggested just like, you know, hiding behind a door or wearing a mask or something. But I guess this works too. See, my sister was scared of clowns and I had this scary clown mask. So I would like hide behind a door sometimes and jump out and scare her. It was funny. What was I talking about again? Diane brings her boyfriend over because she horny too. They try to get it on, but Diane is like, oh no, we can't do it here. Blue balling this shit out of her boyfriend. So he tells her to go in there and lie to everybody and say that she's going somewhere when she's really just going to get her back blown out. Trish ain't buying it. She knows exactly why she's leaving and she basically tells her, bro, you don't have to ask me for permission to get your cheeks clapped. You can leave. She knows she's horny. Everybody in this movie is horny except Trish and possibly Jackie. Mm. I will say Kim, but she smiled a little too hard at the boys when she said in the drinks. And Trish is all over this nigga Jeff. You know, maybe, maybe Trish is horned too. Anyway, Diane goes back to the car and... Damn. Diane tries to get everybody's attention in the house, but the blender that they got is just too loud. So, she dies too. But they don't show it. Again, you know, I'm getting real tired of this movie not showing people get murked, man. So anyway, that pizza that they ordered that I definitely told you about shows up after like 30 minutes. What's the damage? Six. Wait, you mean to tell me that you can get a pizza with mushrooms and olives and sausage for just six dollars? Wow, we get ripped off nowadays. Anyway, they get the pizza. <laughs> Wait, 
wait so if it was the killer the whole time what did he mean by sick oh oh i get it that's his body count see he killed the phone lady the sexy chick mr contact the boyfriend diane and the pizza guy that's clever that's some clever writing now everybody's scared the PE teacher was on the phone when all of this happened so she's scared too trish tries to call for help but the phone ki the phone killer wow i'm retarded trish tries to call for help but the killer cuts the phone line the PE teacher calls valerie and asks if she can go check on them since they live right across the street but valerie says what the fuck i look like no so the PE teacher decides that she'll go herself courtney wants to go but valerie says no so she's all like hmm. then valerie says i'm a snitch if you go and then courtney's like bitch please but she don't end up going so the homies decide to send the dudes out to get help jeff goes to the back and the other dude through the front jeff got trish simping over him while the other dude got two hoes on him you know they really some pimps they spied on the girls and pranked them and they all got hoes for that both of them got more hoes than me now i'm sad she don't wanna f you nigga she don't wanna f you you little anyway jeff gets clapped in the garage after seeing diane's dead body Ain't that ironic? The other dude goes and bangs on Valerie's door, but she's all like, nah. And he keeps doing it, and she's still like, nah. So he keeps going, and she's like, bro, what does this dude want? But the killer catches up to him, and he dies. Oh, snap, Jeff ain't dead. Nice. nice. Back inside the house, Jackie gets hungry and eats some pizza off of this dude's cold, dead body. Oh. I feel better already. Really, I do. Ugh. Jeff crawls his way to the door, but it does absolutely nothing. He gets clapped. <laughs> Valerie has a sudden change of heart and decides to check in on the party, but no one answers the door because everybody's upstairs, so she just leaves. Jackie opens the door thinking she's still there like a moron and gets murked. Hell. Now the killer is inside the house. Valerie goes around the back and- OH MY GOD LOOK UP BEHIND YOU IT'S THE KILLER- Oh no, it's Courtney. Courtney thinks the party lame. Valerie thinks the party's sus, so she texts the front again. The door is open this time, so she starts walking around for the rest of the girls. Trish doesn't want to open the door for her because she thinks that Valerie is sus, so Valerie gives up and leaves. But now Courtney's gone. Oh man. I hope there isn't some lame jump scare that's about to come up. Courtney! Man, they didn't even try that time, bro. Like, none of these jump scares are even scary. All of them are trash. There was one jump scare that got me, though. <laughs> Gets me every time. Anyway, back at the house, Trish and Kim are hiding from the killer and discussing the possibility of Valerie working for the killer. When suddenly... Oh, God. Every time you want to get help, we ever get through... Oh no! The girls are trapped. Whatever are they gonna do? Oh man, I'm glad Trish did that. They sure do have a lot of time to escape. I hope they all make it out to safety. Damn, Kim dead. Meanwhile, Valerie and Courtney are in the house for some reason, and Courtney suggests they raid the fridge, but Valerie wanna leave. Courtney really wants to raid this fridge, but Valerie say no again and tells her to come on. But Courtney gonna do it anyway, cause f the rules. Oh damn, they got a clear shot for the door. Just get out of there. Go. Go. Go, go, man. Oh my God. You had ample time to run for the door. Why on earth would you go in the basement? Women, bro, I swear. At least Courtney was smart enough to run for the door. We got a smart woman in here. Courtney, what the f are you doing under the couch? What? Why is the killer taking a f***ing nap in the middle of a massacre? Like, what purpose does this serve? What are you gonna gain from this? Anyway, the PE teacher shows up and starts looking around for the girl. She sees this mysterious cover on the ground and interrupts the killer's beauty sleep, so he about to clap her for it. But Miss Jan ain't no b She squares up with him. Courtney comes in with the assist, and Trish comes from absolutely nowhere and shanks him, but then stands there like an idiot. Miss Janet saves her, but gets clapped in the process. Then the killer get all weird and start talking about how pretty all the girls were. Like, what a weirdo. Who does that? Valerie come in and clutch with a machete and chases him to the pool. They square up, but Valerie ends up cutting his hand off. He get pissed at her, but Valerie end up clapping him. She hugs her sister and they live happily ever after. I love you, Val. Wait, hold up, he's still alive. Trish coming in with the clutch. Ah, uh, never mind. Valerie lands the killing blow, but not before he backhands the shit out of her. Anyway, the killer is dead, and this whole night can be put to rest. Now, all in all, even if I excuse the titties and the baddies, the Slumber Party Massacre is a, is a pretty nice movie. I mean, I'm kind of biased, because, like, you know, I like how cheesy and, you know, low budget it is, but it's still a pretty nice movie. You should check it out if you haven't. It's on this cool free movie streaming app called Tubi for free. Uh, they got the second one on there, too. But like I said, if you watch the first one and the second one back to back, it's not really going to have the same vibe. But on their own, they're pretty decent movies. Anyways, thanks for watching. Um, if you made it this far in the video, you a G, okay? Give me a high five.
You, oh, no, you're just gonna leave me hanging? Okay, all right, I see. I thought it would be appropriate to, you know, talk about a scary movie while we're in the middle of spooky season. Now, make sure if you weren't too busy out there trick-or-treating or anything, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, you know you can't go anywhere. Make sure you tune back into my channel on Halloween, because I have another one of these uploaded, and we're gonna be talking about a special Halloween movie. Anyways, that's about it. The video's up. <laughs>